All right, you guys. So we're going to do some acrylic um, techniques here. And um, so I want to turn your paper this way, and then we are going to um, set it up. You will need a couple of paintbrushes, always paper towel, um, always, always some paint colors, maybe more than this, but you won't need too many more just for practicing um, water cup. And then you will need some gesso. So gesso is this really thick paste that is sort of like paint, but it's more of like a primer for us. Um, so we are going to be doing that. So the first thing I want you to do is just across the top of your page, draw a line. Sorry, this keeps zooming in and out. It's having a hard time working here. Um, and then we're going to draw a line down. And then we're going to draw another line down. All right, so we're just splitting it into thirds. This top part, I want you to write tissue paper. All right, and then the next one, we are going to want... Um, Sorry, <laughs> we are going to write Sgraffito. Yep, had to double check I spelled it right. Sgraffito, and then um, the next one, let's do Loaded Paintbrush. Okay, so we've got our, our three sections here. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take our paintbrush and you're gonna take our gesso and we are gonna lay down a good amount of gesso on the page. So not too thick, but we're gonna do it in uh, two different spots here. And we're gonna probably do all of these in two different areas so that you have a chance to sort of practice and, and get used to it. The next thing you're gonna do, you're gonna get two pieces of tissue paper. What you're gonna do now is you're gonna crumple it up Okay, we don't want it in a complete ball. We're gonna crumple it up and we're gonna stick it on here. So again, take this. I'm gonna crumple it a little bit less. I want it a little bit more spread out. And you might get a little messy during this time. That's okay. And stick it on here, okay? Then what we are going to do we are going to come in and we are going to take our gesso and we're going to put it on top. And this is going to create that layer. It's going to sort of act as glue. So you might have to get underneath things. Um, like I think I made this part a little too thick. I would maybe potentially have to come back in and do another layer when it's dry. Um, you might get a little bit of bleeding happening. So what that means is the paint is uh, or the gesso is making the tissue paper wet so it's like so I have to like get in here because it's so thick I would definitely I mean not that you can't have this because now it's starting to to get flatter um, but you can see that it has a little bit of a pink tone I would for sure come back and put another layer on that because with a base you want it to be white um, so that any color can go on top and it doesn't like um, what I want to say, uh, like inhibit the color that you're actually doing, you know, like change it a certain tone or anything like that. Paper keeps moving. So this is pretty easy. And this is all we're going to do for this one. We will come back to it at a later time when it's dry. So make sure that you keep this um, as your practice. And this one was a little bit flatter. So it worked a little bit easier for me. You don't have to have like a bunch of paint everywhere, um, but that's uh, that's what you're going to do for this one. All right. Um, I'm going to wash my brush out now because I don't want gesso on it. So let's put it over here. When we're using acrylic, we don't want a ton of water on it unless you're doing a specific technique, which we will learn about in a different video. So you always want to wash your paintbrush and then try to take off as much as you can, like on the side of the glass and then take it off. So I still have some gesso on this brush, so I gotta get it out. I already, my water's already so milky, I may have to get a new brush. All right, so this next one is sort of gonna be like the tissue paper one where we are um, coming back to it. So what I want you to do is I just want you to take um, some paint and put a nice, even, clean layer on. Okay, so we're just going to do a nice, even, clean layer. 
For this next one, I'm going to sort of mix my red and my blue. And I'm going to carefully put my paintbrush in the red because I don't want to make it too, I should have gotten a different section of red, but I wasn't thinking. So this is sort of just making it, and I know it's hard to see on your end. Maybe I'll grab a little bit more red here. You can always wipe your brush off. On, I do this so many times. My uh, paper towel, oh, I just got stuff on me. My paper towel is always very messy because I am constantly um, wiping my paint off so that I'm able to sort of blend or mix together. All right, so this is more of like a gradation one, which we'll talk about in a little bit, but I just wanted two different colors so that when we get to it, we can see how it's different. So for right now, again, just setting ourselves up. This is all we're going to do. I'm going to wash my brush again. All right, and now with this one, I have a smaller brush. I'm going to use this one. And for our loaded paintbrush, we're going to use all three colors. Oh, here we go. Um, again, you don't have to have my colors. You can have whatever colors you want. And doing this, I would suggest taking a little bit of paint out and putting it in a different section here. So washing my brush out then taking some red, putting it in another section. And taking some white and putting it in another section there. And then washing my brush out and I'm going to really dry my brush for this. I don't want it super wet, so I'm just going to come in here and squeeze it and wash it. So for this one, this is a fun technique to use. So my brush isn't all the way clean because my water is gross, but we're not going to take time to stop. So um, I would totally suggest <laughs> really cleaning your brush out. But since we're doing this loaded paintbrush technique, you may not need to, especially if it's a color you've already used. So for this, we're going to take some of our brush, dip it in the blue. We're going to take the same brush, dip it in the red so that it's on our brush. And then we're going to take the same brush and dip it in white. So now I've got all of these different colors on my brush. And when I use them to paint, they can create a really cool effect without really having to blend. So if we look at that, you can see that there's lots of different color blends happening, which is very, very cool. So you can do that for background work. It's really nice and um, beneficial to do that and depending on what your background is. But you can also use it a lot for flowers. So I know my flower isn't going to be the best here, but uh, just quick. So I really like using this for flowers. Again, I'll load my paintbrush up. And I have the blue and the red sort of on top of each other. And I'm going to put the white on the side. I may have gotten a little too much for my flower here, for my petals, because they're a little small. But I'll come in. And if I come in and do this, then I've got some really cool effects. And if I position my brush correctly, sorry, just reloading here. If I position my brush correctly, I can get it where the highlight is always on the same side if I wanted to. Like there I'm losing, and it will mix, right? The really awesome piece about having, uh, so you can even come back on top and get those highlights where you want. And there's a lot of paint on here, not gonna lie. There's a lot of paint, so I could wipe off my brush and come in and really get that sort of blended a little bit more if I wanted to. But I think this is, can be a really pretty look for flowers. Here, I'll bring it up a little bit here too. Whoop, sorry, I just bumped it. So it can be a really pretty look for flowers where you get these different highlights. Um, sometimes I think it might even look better with just two colors. So if I were to come in with a blue, so I'm loading my brush up with regular blue and then I come in like on the side, like and just put white on the side. And if I wanted to do like a petal, I can do like this, where my white's on the inside, right? I'm just sort of, and my blue's on the outside, and I can get a really nice value without having to really work at blending. 
So it's a really, really great tool to use, especially when you have, like if you have a background and you've got blending colors, it's really great. But for different things, if you've got opposite colors, it's a really, really great tool to use um, together. So this is, um, this is this paper and we're gonna let all of this dry so we can come back.